Christmas, everyone. My name is Scott Wood. I'm the senior pastor here, and I want to share with you uh, three different little segments. My first segment is all along this theme this Christmas season has been Christmas changes everything. And three weeks ago, we looked at change, uh, Christmas changes your past, then we looked at your present, then we looked at your future for two weeks. And tonight, I want to share with you some thoughts on Christmas changes everything, crazy or miraculous. For some reason, the comment I have heard over and over during this season is, there are so many crazy people out there. This world is really crazy. Here's what some others have said. My psychiatrist told me I was crazy. So I asked him for a second opinion. He said, okay, you're ugly too. <laughs> Jim Carrey writes, I practiced making faces in the mirror and it would drive my mother crazy. She used to say to me, if you keep doing that, you're going to see the devil if you keep looking in the mirror like that. He said that fascinated him even more, so he said, I just kept doing it. How many times have you heard lately, I feel like I'm going crazy, or my wife drives me crazy, <laughs> or my husband drives me crazy, or my significant other drives me crazy? I went to lunch the other day, and I saw a friend that I hadn't seen for three, four years, and she had her teenage boy with her, and they kind of got in a little scruffle, and she looked at me, and she goes, I have three. They drive me crazy. And I knew what I was going to be speaking on, and it just, I've, I've been listening to all of this. And I was with another friend two days later. I was talking with him, and he looked at me, and he said, you know, this relationship I'm in is driving me crazy. So oftentimes when we feel like we're going crazy or we say this person or this situation is making me crazy, I think sometimes isn't what's under the root of it is we feel kind of out of control with this person. We don't know what to do with them. At some level, we're saying, you know, I feel almost like I'm a victim. I don't have a clue how to deal with this person. I feel like I could be going insane. Part of it is that we can feel so angry at people that make us upset. You might think, well, you know, it's just unfair that this person can rain on my parade like this. Don't we all feel like this at some time in our lives? Yeah, I think so. And it feels like more and more, doesn't it, that our culture's becoming crazy and out of control. Many people feel more and more unsafe and uneasy with what's happening all around them. Just 10 days ago, we had the Newtown, Connecticut incident where the horrific shooting of 20 children, five and six years of age, and six adults took place. Some say the young man that was involved in this was crazy. But as more information is coming out, we just might find that it wasn't so much crazy as there was evil involved. Many times what we call crazy can be malevolent or devious intentions behind those actions. Well, there were many crazy things taking place concerning Jesus' birth which is what our marvelous Christmas season is all about. It is about God becoming human and coming to intervene in our lives by being born so that he could die on the cross and break the power of sin in our lives. The angel said, you will name him Jesus, Yahshua, which means the Lord saves. Would you follow along as I read uh, Matthew 2, 1 through 6, verses 13? 16 and 18. Jesus was born in Bethlehem in Judea during the reign of King Herod. About that time, some wise men from eastern lands arrived in Jerusalem asking, where is the newborn king of the Jews? We saw his star as it rose and we have come to worship him. King Herod was deeply disturbed when he heard this, as was everyone in Jerusalem. He called a meeting of the leading priests and teachers of the religious law and asked, where is the Messiah supposed to be born? In Bethlehem in Judea, they said. After the wise men were gone, an angel of the Lord appeared to Joseph in a dream. Get up, flee to Egypt with the child and his mother, the angel said. Stay there until I tell you to return, because Herod is going to search for the child to kill him. 
Herod was furious when he realized that the wise men had outwitted him. He sent soldiers to kill all the boys in and around Bethlehem who were two years old and under based on the wise men's report of the star's first appearance. Herod's brutal action fulfilled what God had spoken through the prophet Jeremiah. A cry was heard in Ramah, weeping and great mourning. Rachel weeps for her children, refusing to be comforted for they are dead. If uh, you'll look in your bulletin, there are notes. If something strikes you and you'd like to take notes, feel free to do that. Point one that I want to just look at is Christmas and crazy. Christmas and crazy. There are a lot of different things that are going on in our culture with the tension, the stress, the pressure, uh, the recession. There's all kinds of things that are going on. And oftentimes what I've noticed in 20 years of senior pastoring here that during the Christmas season, a lot of people in our culture have a tendency to feel depressed, to feel down. Oftentimes I hear them say, you know, the Christmas season drives me crazy. And oftentimes I'll ask them why, and it's because they have a perception. Christmas is about family. Christmas is about intimacy. Christmas is about friendship. It's about love. It's about acceptance. It's about forgiveness. And so oftentimes in the Christmas season, we experience everything but that. So at Christmas, it can seem kind of crazy making. But as crazy as all these changes are that's going on in our culture, crazy, crazy was in full force during the birth of Jesus Christ, the reason for Christmas. Look at letter A there. Spiritual issues have a tendency to intimidate us. Jesus was born during the reign of King Herod. Herod was part Jew. He was also part Edomian, which means he was an Edomite. Edomites are the descendants of Esau who gave up his inheritance for a bowl of lentil soup to his brother Jacob. There was a long-standing feud between the Edomites and the Israelites. And Herod, through accommodation to the Romans, he ascended to power in what's called a client king. And he enjoyed uh, a leadership role for quite a long time. Herod was known as a great builder of public works, and he was a shrewd diplomat in dealings uh, with the Romans and the Jews. But he laid oppressive taxes on uh, the, the Jews and conscript, conscripted labor from the Israelites. And that did not go over very well with them. As he grew o older, he became more paranoid about threats against the throne. He had numerous sons and wives and others close to him that he put to death because he feared their plots to overthrow him. So when the astrologers, known as the Magi or the wise men, came and they started asking, where is this newborn king of the Jews? The Bible says that Herod was incredibly disturbed. New Testament scholar Blomberg says that the word disturb is way too weak of a translation for the Greek word. It actually meant that he was terrified or that he was agitated greatly. All Jerusalem most likely means primarily that the religious leaders of Israel, many of them who were personally installed by Herod himself, they were also agitated because they could see, a, 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 they saw a political coup coming. In Jesus' birth, in his life, and his death, and his resurrection, people often gave him a very crazy response to who he was. Have you noticed even in our culture, maybe even for some of us here, all you have to do is mention the name of Jesus and people can become intimidated or frightened or agitated or angry or antagonistic. I wonder why that is, you think. Jesus either has a way of inspiring you to want to turn your life over to him and to trust him and to follow him and commit your life to him or people will have a tendency to want to move away because they don't want to relate to him. This is a dilemma that many people can feel like they're losing control. In our culture, it's very common to hear people say, I won't give control to my life to anyone. I am the master of my own fate. And Jesus was aware of this tension. 
In Matthew, or in Mark 8, 34 to 37, he says this. If any of you wants to be my follower, you must turn away from your selfish ways. Take up your cross and follow me. Now notice the tension. He says, if you try to hang on to your life, you will lose it. But if you give up your life for my sake and for the sake of the good news, you will save it. What do you benefit if you gain the whole world, but you lose your own soul? And here's the $10 billion question. Is anything worth more than your soul? And he would answer, no. The backlash, I think, that we're witnessing in our culture to Jesus and to Christianity, I think is motivated by fear. He came to reconcile us to our Heavenly Father so that we can have an intimate relationship with our Creator. If you understand that and you say, I, I, want, I agree with that, I want to move towards Him, you will find the greatest source of joy and peace and significance and value imaginable. Would you join us now? We're going to sing some more. Spiritual issues misunderstood can make you do some crazy things. An angel tells Joseph to take Mary and Jesus and move to Egypt because Herod had lied to the Magi. He didn't really want to come and he didn't want to worship Jesus because of his own fear, his own paranoia, his own arrogance, his own craziness. He wanted to kill Jesus. If Herod had truly believed what the Old Testament had said about the coming Messiah, he wouldn't have been fearful of him. He would have known that because of the Messiah, to really know him is to love him, to know him, and to follow him. But instead, because of his fear, he sent the soldiers in and around Bethlehem and gave them the order to kill every boy two years old and younger. Because of lack of wisdom and understanding about why Jesus came, he committed this massacre not unlike what happened in Newtown. Historians have calculated that because of the high infant mortality rate, that if the total population was about 1,000 with an annual birth rate of 30, the male children under two years of age would have scarcely numbered more than 20. Isn't that interesting? The killing was merciless and it was unnecessary. But in Hebrew history, the Jews would have been reminded of the killing of all of Israel's firstborn in Egypt. It's what happens when we become paranoid and frightened and filled with fear. When people misunderstand spiritual issues like why did Jesus come? Why did God have to come and become a human? Sometimes we make decisions filled with fear like we reject the very God who created us, who loved us, who died for us so that we could have forgiveness and we could experience his acceptance. Would you listen to this uh, duet called Do You Hear?
So here at TV Church, uh, the CV Church Worship Band, we wanted to give you all a gift for uh, this Christmas season, or this tomorrow is Christmas. And so we wanted to, to give you guys um, a free um, download of that song. Um, so if you like um, Facebook or CV Church LA Facebook page, um, you will get that song for free. So please go home and download that. So blessings to you. I've listened to that song about 50 times, and we'll probably hear it a couple hundred more in the next few days. So I uh, encourage you to, to receive uh, your free gift. All you have to do is go on Facebook. Did you hear? Christmas and crazy, that's the negative side. The positive side is Christmas and the miraculous. I want to share four miraculous gifts that God gives to you in Jesus Christ at this Christmas time. Would you just follow along as I read Isaiah 9, 6, and 7? For a child is born to us, a son is given to us. The government will rest on his shoulders, and he will be called four things about this world ruler. He'll be called the Wonderful Counselor. He'll be called the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, and the Prince of Peace. His government and its peace will never end. He will rule with fairness and justice from the throne of his ancestor David for all eternity. The passionate commitment of the Lord of heaven's armies will make this happen. Look just quickly with the four miraculous gifts. Letter A there. Supernatural guidance is given to us at Christmas when you receive Christ, your Christmas gift. This prophecy says that the coming Messiah our King and God, would excel in giving us the kind of wisdom we need to succeed in every area of our lives. Is it just me, or, or are you realizing more and more, too? It takes wisdom to succeed in today's life. It does. You've got to know what to do, when to do it, why to do it, how to do it. And isn't it marvelous that Christ knew that over 2,000 years ago and says, I don't want to leave you alone or defenseless. I specialize in giving wonderful counsel. It's counsel to 
solve your confusion, to dispel your fear, and to give you what you need to inherit eternal life. In 1 Corinthians chapter 1, and verse 24, it tells us that Jesus is the wisdom of God. What does that mean? He is your advisor. He is your teacher. He is your friend. He is your confidant. Because Jesus is God, if you build your life on the foundation of his word and his wisdom, he promises this. Then when life storms come, and it's not a matter of if, would you agree? Storms come all the time. Tsunamis come. The winds come to knock your life down. And Jesus said this, if you'll build your life on my counsel, on my wisdom, on my word, he said, I can give you this promise. The winds will come. The water will rise. But your house will be left standing. Sometimes you win just when you stand. Would you agree? Life can huff and puff and threaten to blow your house down. But Christ says, if you build it on me, you'll always be left standing. He offers you his wisdom at this Christmas time. The second gift in his person and his names represent is supernatural power. Jesus is called the mighty God. The Hebrew word El Gabor means our hero God, our warrior God. Jesus is our warrior God who took on our chief enemy, Satan, death, hell, and the grave. And the Bible says that he emerged victorious through his resurrection and ascension in heaven. When you surrender your life to Christ, he gives you his supernatural power to discover what his purpose and his plan is for your life. You just simply call out and say to your mighty God, I want you in my life, and he is there. Supernatural wisdom, supernatural power. Third gift he gives us is supernatural parenting. Anybody a parent here? Yeah, wow. I've needed lots of help. How about you? <laughs> uh, children have a unique way of exposing things in us, don't they? And, and uh, we need all the help we can get. And this is an interesting passage because it says that Jesus is the everlasting or the eternal father. In Romans 5.1, it says that Jesus gives us peace with God. When you give your life to Jesus, you have peace. I can honestly tell you, I don't second guess how God feels about me, what he thinks about me, or if his plans are good. I know they are. Jeremiah 29.11, the Lord says, I know the plans that I have for you, and they are their plans for good. I know his character. I know who he is. So I, I, I never ever, when the storms hit and the bottom seems to fall out, I never ever say, God, why did you let that happen? Because I know he's good. And I know that his purposes will stand. He never promised us that we wouldn't have any problems. Right? He never said that, that if you love me, you won't have tragedy. He didn't promise that. What he promised is, I will be there with you, and I will carry you through. Why? Because he is our supernatural parent. And the last thing he promises, supernatural counsel, supernatural power, supernatural parenting, letter D, supernatural peace. <laughs> Jesus is called the Prince of Peace. Peace is a very interesting word. It's one of the most important words in the Old Testament. It has to do with well-being. It has to do with health and vibrancy. It has to do with that sense of vitality that only God can give. The Bible says that Jesus gives you his peace and he lets you know that everything is going to be okay. He gives you his supernatural guidance, his supernatural power, his supernatural parenting and his supernatural peace. This Christmas, I want to encourage all of us to exchange our own personal craziness. Some of you are around my age. Do you remember the phrase, I'm okay, you're okay? Mm -hmm. I have a new one. I'm a little crazy, and you're a little crazy. <laughs> we all got a little crazy in this. And the beautiful thing is, at Christmas, you ever been in those parties where you have exchange gifts? Jesus would say, I want to exchange with you. You give me your craziness. You give me your fear. 
You give me your failures. You give me your pride, your arrogance, all the things that causes you problems. And I will give you my counsel. And I will give you my power. And I will be your parent. And I will give you my peace. Now, starting December 30th, we start here at CV Church a new series. And we're entitling it, You Make Me Crazy. <laughs> Some of us have just said that recently, maybe to somebody sitting next to you. Don't look at them. Don't, don't nudge them. <laughs> but, yeah, don't do it. Don't do it, Harry. <laughs> the Bible specializes in teaching us God's wisdom in how to deal with difficult people in difficult situations. You will be given during this series strategies and skills that you can put lovingly into practice to respond to the crazy makers in your life. This coming Sunday, we're going to learn how to plant seeds of peace in our most troubled relationships. I'm going to call it peace-filled relationships. Anybody need peace in their relationships? Yeah, most of us do. In the upcoming weeks, we're going to look at topics like what triggers your anger. Do you have certain people that it just doesn't matter? You can even say, I'm not going to get angry around this person. And you get in their presence and it just flip, flips your trigger. Anybody like that or just me? Okay. I'm not the only crazy one here. We'll learn skills and how to resolve conflict with difficult people. And how to be free from people pleasing. How many of us know what a burden it is to have to feel like we always have to please people, especially those we love the most, and it seems like we can never please them? God has some answers for that. There's some skills that you can learn so you don't have to be underneath that. Does this series sound like it might be useful to anyone here? Well, listen, we'd like to encourage you to come. Uh, we start this Sunday. Uh, we have three services, 8, 845, 1015, 1145. This is this something that you think would be of help to you? We would love to be able to help you. Merry Christmas. the Wood family, yeah. and from CV Church. Merry Christmas. It's been a good year for a lot of you. It's been a tough year for a lot of you. But be encouraged. Christmas changes everything. Yeah, it does. It really does. Um, I hope you have a wonderful celebration with family and friends. And also, we really do want to invite you. Christmas can keep going if you go to Facebook and uh, our CV Church page, and you uh, download our Do You Hear What I Hear. You can celebrate all one, year. One more thing we'd like to do. Let's gently. Some people blew it out last time. You could see the wax go like this. You don't want to hurt your neighbor. And let's blow out nicely together. We want to wish you a, a Merry Christmas. And as you uh, exit, we'll have boxes that you can put your candles in. So Merry Christmas. Have a great celebration.